my last video on Luckin Coffee was based on Friday's news that Luckin Coffee is not attending the Nasdaq hearing committee and therefore will move to over-the-counter trading, which in fact happened. Now in that video I was speculating about why Luckin Coffee is actually not attending the meeting and I was thinking, well possibly there are still internal fights going on within Luckin Coffee that kind of make it impossible to pitch a compliance plan to Nasdaq and thereby it doesn't make sense to actually try and keep Luckin listed. Well, I have been spot on with this notion and it seems like there is indeed a fight going on with the board of directors and the directors of Luckin Coffee. So in this video I'm going to talk about what's going on behind the scenes. I will tell you what I think of it and also what the shareholder vote has to do with that and also give an outlook on what this may mean for Luckin Coffee and the future. As always, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much and please subscribe to the channel in order to stay updated on Chinese stocks. And if you're coming back, you're awesome. Thank you guys for watching and please smash the like button that really helps us to grow the channel. So let's dive straight into it. So on Friday, after trading was over for the day, um, well, what happened is that Luckin Coffee filed another 6K with some very important information. So here it goes. So the first bit of news is that the board of directors have decided that they want to get rid of Lu Zhong Yao, the co-founder and the chairman of Luckin Coffee, which is responsible for the fraud. It seems there is evidence based on the governmental investigations and also uh, some of the board, uh, board members have actually seen um, this kind of evidence that Lu Zhong Yao instructed his employees to finesse the books and uh, to commit this fraud. So the news is here that the board together decides that tomorrow actually they will be holding a meeting upon how to actually yeah, get rid of Lu Zhong Yao. So if you remember Lu, Lu Zhong Yao is calling on the 5th of July for a meeting in which well most of the directors should actually be voted out of the company including Lu Zhong Yao himself and in addition um, they want to bring on two new independent directors to the board. Now regarding this meeting that Lu Zhong Yao called in, the board is now responding that the board has resolved to recommend to shareholders to vote against the proposal to remove Mr. Sean Shao as an independent director of the board due to the concerns of a potential disruption uh, to the ongoing internal investigation considering Mr. Shao currently serves as the chairman of the special committee of the board. So this exactly confirmed my point that um, actually there is an internal fight going on between the other board members and Lu Zhong Yao and well Lu Zhong Yao possibly um, called in this extraordinary general meeting in order to get rid of Mr. Shao, who is leading the investigation and possibly wanting to end the investigation that way. And also in addition to that, he wants to vote in two new independent directors, which are actually called in by Mr. Liu himself. So there's rumors floating around that um, the two new independent directors that should come onto Luck and Coffee board here are actually linked to Lu Zheng Yao. And in total, this means that Lu Zheng Yao is calling in that meeting and the shareholders the vote in order to kind of yeah scramble with the investigations and at the same time kind of retaining um, control of the company here even though he himself is possibly getting kicked out anyways. Because if you remember my charts, um, the, C the current CEO who's currently running as an intermediate in the company, he is actually also a good friend, um, part of the uh, locking fraud team or at least at the inner circle of Lu Zhang Yao. And now with this new independent directors on which I have actually done a little bit of background research, it seems like um, Lu Zhang Yao is kind of trying to um, shape the company in a way that he can still keep control of. So I've done a little bit of background research on Sarah Zeng and also the other director, Yang Jie, and well, both of them really don't add any value to the Luckin board um, if they come on board. They have a legal background. It seems like, for instance, Sarah, she's been yeah working with lots of state-owned enterprises in China, doing lots of M&As, but mostly China outbound, actually. So with, uh, for instance, China Min Metals here, with uh, CEFC, China Energy, and so on. 
on. Um, so, well, even though they have like extensive work experience, for me, it seems more like they have kind of a um, state background and are kind of old school in a way that it wouldn't add any benefit to a young startup like Luck and Coffee. So actually, um, in this case, it doesn't make much sense for them to come onto the board and have them as a director on the company. So this news is clearly showing for once that there are internal fights going on and somebody is still fighting about the company and actually what will happen to Lu Yao and who will retain the ownership in the company. And then that also leading to the fact that it doesn't make much sense to stay listing or fighting the listing with Nasdaq um, as there is no way that you can actually pitch a compliance, uh, compliance plan uh, with this sort of news going on. Second of all, it seems that Mr. Shao, he has the support of the other board members and directors and they want them to continue with the investigation and um, yeah that might be the only way of actually yeah, coming up with a cleanup for Luckin Coffee. At the same time it seems that this is exactly what Lu Zhongyao is fighting against. Now the big question is how shareholders are going to vote and what's going to happen. So we know the fact that Lu Zhongyao, he has been defaulting on his loan and thereby losing a lot of um, shareholder voting power as well as uh, Jian Zhiya, she also lost voting power and is out ousted by the company. So, so the big question now is who is right now holding most of the shares in Luck and Coffee and can actually influence the vote in terms of that um, it's carried forward in a way that um, Luck and Coffee could actually do a restart somehow and, and voting against Lu Zhengyao and his kind of proposals. So one crucial aspect here is actually that this 6K with this kind of news was published after trading finished on Friday and this means that most retail investors have actually possibly already sold their stake in Luck and Coffee because they thought well it may be the last trading day and thereby they want to just get rid of their shares and now possibly they cannot vote on this very very important um, outcome of the shareholder meeting. So that's really a question who is communicating so badly at Luck and Coffee? Who is to blame for that? Is it the uh, agency that is actually handling the shareholder communications of Luck and Coffee or is this due to the fact that there are those internal fights going on and people are like fighting on when to release the 6Ks and such so we don't have any insights on that however the timing is really really unfortunate especially for um, those who are holding Luck and Coffee let's say for instance as Robin Hood investors and now they possibly missed out on this opportunity to make their vote count. So now if you are holding Luck and Coffee shares, you should really watch what is going to happen tomorrow when uh, the board meets about how to get rid of Lu Zhengyao. And also, of course, on the outcome of the voting on 5th of July, you should be voting. Um, I, I think I gave a lot of information about um, how the implications of each of those votes that are required um, are actually affecting the company. So um, yeah, you, you possibly know how to vote uh, in this process. And um, then in case there will be a cleanup following because let's say um, Lu Zhengyao is really removed from the company and also um, let's say the investigation can continue uh, then we may see an attempt of Luck and Coffee to try and get listed somewhere else possibly in the future if the people who are remaining with the company for instance the CFO Reynold Shako if they deem that the company is still worthy of ongoing for instance with the cash at hands and also that um, there are prospects of actually making a turnaround and yeah let's say even being successful with a second listing somewhere else or even a relisting with Nasdaq. These are possibilities and opportunities there however of course right now it's still unsure how first of all the voting will um, affect the outcomes here and second of all even what are the prospects of a possible outcome of the vote here afterwards like is there really still a cleanup possible or not. So let me know what you think about it in the comments also once again please smash the like button and help and share it with the investors community so that everybody who's still holding on to the shares can actually make their vote in this very important uh, voting here. You should actually um, get a mail with your broker otherwise let them know that you want to uh, participate in the, in those votes maybe if you're in China you can 
can actually go there on uh, and uh, go to Beijing and uh, participate in the shareholder meeting if you are uh, applicable for that. And then let's see what's happening during this week and, and also how actually the shares will react to that, uh, which are now trading over the counter and well, yeah, doing okay right now. But well, as we know with those kind of uh, beaten down stocks, they are very volatile and they can go in any direction very quickly. So stay safe with investing and see you in the next video. Cheers and thanks for watching.